sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see the troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Welcome to the War Chant Man Cave Show, and I am joined, as always, by Jeff Cameron, Good ESPN Radio 97.9, ESPN Radio, Cheers. and great to have you back. Glad to hear your son is doing much yeah, better. Yeah, he's doing all better. For you. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully he continues to trend in the right direction. Appreciate it. Thanks to everybody on War Chant who said uh, a lot of nice things. I, I hope I, you got I, to see that big, long thread. I, I, a lot of I finally did. I know did. you I, had other things on your mind. I did, I was, but that was really sweet. Uh, beyond words, so I appreciate that very much. Very nice. We are sponsored by Jimmy John's Freaky Good, Freaky Fast, Freaky Fresh. And what a great yes. weekend. If you want to go ahead and order, go to jimmyjohns.com, get a gorgeous platter like this or mm -hmm. two, and sit around and park your ass down all day long and watch some great football. It is a great time to do that, Jeff. And you get the chips, you get the sandwiches, the yummy cookies, sandwiches all that stuff. Sandwiches are the stuff. key. They are. Which is, this is, you don't notice this, it's yeah. a little deception. The back <laughs> half of this is empty. Yeah. So I was saying, it's like we're playing Jenga. If you ever play that game, we're pulling up, trying to make the stack not fall down. Well, there's one more I can pull without well, that thing collapsing. Let's, collapse. we can let's get that wait till the next right. segment at least before done. we do that. Now I want to go to the unmentionables, as always. Say hi, unmentionables. All right, all we right. have one unmentionable we're going to mention because he's mentionable, and that yeah. is Kirk Carruthers, yeah, Florida State is. linebacker, All-American linebacker. Kirk, appreciate you joining us. And I still say to this day the best single performance in a game by a defender in history of Florida State, his performance in 1989 against the Hurricanes. I remember it. And by the way, what did you weigh? Back in your playing days. What are you talking about, Jeff? What I, did you I, I, 250. Yeah, I always wondered. I always thought, I mean, I would go to those games and like, that guy makes more tackles for being 160 pounds. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of heart and want to right there. That's was that the biggest game for you just playing the Hurricanes back then? Was it, that it? it was. Uh, it was probably my breakout game, but, you know, it always is amazing. Uh, it's Florida State, Miami, and it doesn't get any better. You guys know that. Do you, like, have friends come over and just, hey, listen, uh, this was me against Miami and just pop in the <laughs> tank. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but uh, this was, uh, you know, ever get a chance to throw that in? Of course. Okay. I've, I've got a ro high rotation in my house. It just constantly revolves. You walk in the house and it's just on. Exactly. TVs throughout the corner. It's perfect. <laughs> well, appreciate you joining us. Uh, it's appropriate that he's here for Florida State yeah, Miami Week. Absolutely. The rivalry continues and... The last time we didn't get to go last week, so I didn't get to get oh, my oh, oh, there it is. So the Invincibles told me you made a bad pick last week, so. Two weeks ago, yes. Yeah. And if you can't see this on camera. That would be crow. Do you want to mix this up with the Jimmy Johns? It's a little different. I've got to eat my crow. Uh, yeah. I was disloyal to the family. I You're allowed to be Florida disloyal, State. but, oh, no. you know, I mean, you took a certain amount of zeal in picking against us last week. I, I don't know about stop. zeal. I, I feel like you were really excited about that, buddy. Yeah. It just felt uncomfortable. And you were thinking I was balls on correct about the third, early third quarter. No, I really, really you knew they were coming that. back. No, huh? no, when we, when we cut it to 10, I said, oh, well, Gene's going to be, be wrong. And oh, I did. Once it got down to 10, yeah, I yeah, said, thank goodness it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. All right. What y'all drinking tonight? This would be a porter, a coffee porter, and yes. it's delicious, and yeah. I think it's right over there. Yes, Highland Thunderstruck. We had to give them some credit. I know okay. they're distributed by Brown Friends at Brown. appreciate right. you guys bringing Thank that you. up here to Tallahassee, so some Thunderstruck, mm -hmm. please. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about this, Jeff, a little by bit. By the way, Corner Pocket. Give some love to Corner Pocket. We're going to do that. Okay, the next, the next segment is sponsored by Corner. That's right. Uh, that is Caitlin from Corner okay, Pocket. Okay, right? Okay. I'm on time here, buddy. You're right. See, <laughs> see, you're good at the whole. You do this every day, <laughs> yeah, three to six, Monday I'm through Friday. Gonna... You're good at working those sponsors. <laughs> and sometimes I get caught up. I got some beer. I got sandwich. I got crow. And you've got plenty of things to do here. Yeah, I just so wanted to make sure we got the shout out. I'm getting the sensory right, overload then. here. I don't know what to do. What did you want to look at? Let's do that. Why? Let's, before we get into Miami, and, and this is going to be fun with Miami because it's so much fun to make fun of them. They're easy. They're an easy target. Yeah easy yeah, but yeah you got we can't go by without talking about the committee i gotta say i was shocked honestly that they surprised. would drop a four state undefeated uh, below one loss team and not a one loss team that had some impressive barely loss on a road against a top five team this right. is a loss against an unranked team at home i mean jeff what i mean are you all right blown i'm away, sorry but uh -oh. i have one more present for all right oh, man. i have to pay my jeff penance my i have to play the fool this week the show is going to be right. yeah, being yeah. made Can fun of in its entirety Beautiful. That's a good look. <laughs> one segment. Thank you. Uh, here's what I think. I'm not against a, a one-loss program being ahead of an undefeated team, per se. I mean, there are instances where I can understand why that would happen. Two Power Five teams, even. I'm okay with that in certain years. 
This particular one, you're right to point out, however, should not be the team that has jumped Florida State, given that they lost at home to Arizona. And if the committee is suddenly going to start considering injury from week oh, to week, that's yeah. a very dangerous precedent to set. Is that what they're doing now? They're going to look at injury reports every week? Well, and how do you, how do you, how about he was a tackle? How about he was a linebacker? Right. How about he was a cornerback? Right. But what I don't like about that, I think it sets the ability for them to put subjective criteria. You can use any rationale you want to rank anybody anywhere. So, well, they had an injury. Well, this, this, but, this, and this. But, Gene, this carries, a long tra it carries on a longstanding tradition of a flawed system by which we decide who's a national champion in college football. And it's been going on for years. We complained about yeah. the BCS. The AP and the coaches' vote was a joke as well. There were many times that teams had no business being ranked. BYU won a national championship in 1984. Was one of the oh, yeah. I mean, by, well, it was the biggest joke in it, right? That was a different yeah. system. Well, it was a split title, right? It, it, that yeah, year, no, they won. They, they ended up winning. Everybody wow. lost in front of them, and they beat Michigan uh, in a bowl game. Who was a three or four loss Michigan team when they? So the point is, this just carries on a longstanding tradition of the flawed manner by which we pick a college football champion, or at least the combatants in the final game. I'm okay with saying that this team, Team A, can have a resume so superior that yeah, even okay. with one loss, I'm going to move them ahead. What's well, happened all the time against some non-power right. five teams? You see that happen. Right, but I, I even think within the there are certain years where it's abundantly clear Ohio State. Plays nobody right, in the end of the season, right. and you could see why a team who had played three times. I'm going to go that because I hate Urban. I will say, screw but up. But they're, they're, yeah, they're yeah, a yeah, perfect yeah. example. No, you know, prior to losing to Michigan State last year, we were all like, who the But how does that apply to Oregon when they have not right. been impressive at all? I mean, all they, I need to see, well, I think they've been impressive, but I will say this. Did I, you not see that Utah game? They ran the ball up and down the field. They're, right. they're ranked out. You know what the rank is defensively? 112th, 114th yeah, in defense. Right. When is a team that they don't I agree, deserve to jump anybody? I agree this particular team should not have jumped Florida State. But here's what I want to see, and here's what's most important is next week, Oregon, first of all, has played 10 games, and we've played nine. I, I, and what they ended up doing, in my opinion, was taking nine wins that Florida State has and nine wins that Oregon has and saying Oregon's nine wins are more impressive than Florida mm -hmm. State's nine wins, and then excluded a pretty important factor, and that is that Oregon has a loss, and Florida State doesn't. <laughs> if Florida State moves to 10-0, and 0, and by the way, Oregon has a bye this week, and Florida State's 10-0 and 0 is still behind 9-1. They're going to be Oregon? behind them. They won't be. I don't think so. Uh, unless they blow Miami out. They win, let's say so. they win by three. They cover the spread. But I yeah. guarantee you Oregon will be ahead of Oregon. Spread's two. I mean, they will beat whatever. They, if it's less than a I touchdown, they will not jump Oregon. Then we will really we'll, bitch. We'll, we'll I don't put think a so drink on that Okay, one. let's put a drink on We'll drink on that one. That's fine. You bring uh, the beers State next week. Florida will surpass Oregon next week. All right, we'll see. I don't think so. but Well, I hope they just blow Miami out. And then it's all, well, then it's a moot point. Yeah, good. sure. Speaking of Miami, you know in the past Man Cave show when we played Miami, we've talked about the greatest games of all time, some of the There's environments. Been a lot of good ones. And there have. But you know one thing I was thinking about today? There's been some great hits. And this thing, some absolute Nasty knockdown, hits by great drag athletes, out yeah. hits. I'm going to go through a few well, here. You know my get... favorite. We don't even need to start. Okay, go ahead. Marvin Jones. Oh, yeah. Marvin, Marvin Jones, Jones and Larry Jones. He's my favorite player of all time yeah, he, in sports yeah. football history. So it's Marvin to me all day long. 96 down linebacker there. Linebacker to linbacker, Kirk. you got to do it, buddy. Today, even the second greatest linebacker of all time at Florida State agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Derek Brooks. I'm yeah. just kidding. Uh, no, Shade Trees hits number one on my list. I know you agree. Stanford Samuels, but I'm No, 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 no. That's yeah. in the top five, Stanford Samuels. But, but he hurt himself on that play as well. Shade Tree did not hurt yeah, himself. Yeah, no, no. That was, that was just a great hit. And he, yeah. was, he was fantastic as a linebacker. Sure. Some of the other ones I want to go through here, you mentioned the Stanford Samuels. The, you called the windmill on Roscoe Parrish, making him spin around, yeah. which would have been flagged. You would have ejected these days. He would have. He did kind of hit. And how about, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of ejected, how about the Nigel Bradham hit in 2011? Which was a perfectly legal hit. hit. Yeah. It was such a good hit, and that's why they kicked him out. They're like, well, it must have been a bad hit because look how he hit it him. It was so violent. But I remember yes. at the time, and I, you know, I don't like to be in any way in the same sentence as Matt Millen necessarily, but <laughs> I said on the field, they should throw Ja'Cory Harris out of the game for that throw. Mm -hmm. That poor bastard being led to the slaughter by a quarterback who had obviously no heart. Uh, that's not what you do, and yeah, it got him killed, and it was a perfectly legal hit. You're right. It was. And you got to remember Greg Jones trucking Sean Taylor. Also, that was that was, I was classic. I was down on the field. It was in the bowl game. I was down on the field for that. It was our rematch. Yeah, against them. in the Orange Bowl. And yep. In the Orange Bowl, we ended up losing that game, unfortunately, uh, just like we did when Stanford Samuels laid the hit. But uh, that trucking, because it was over Sean Taylor, who was a fierce safety yeah. and a wonderful player, and we won't speak ill of the dead. But when he got rolled like that, I'm standing down on the field. I can remember you looking know how back. That is, yeah. and, and Sean Nobody does that to Sean Taylor. And he got embarrassed. Well, what are you going to do when Greg Jones is coming at you? <laughs> full, you know, Greg Jones is safety, coming at me. I'm heading for the side. Well, and every safety's nightmare is him, uh, is a back that full size getting past the linebackers, like and untouched. <laughs> Downhill at 238 of all man. That's not yeah, what you do. No, yeah, no, that no, was no. that was fun.
Actually, the, my, probably, the probably well. my second favorite hit, and unfortunately never got caught on TV, so nobody talks about it, and that's Ryan Clement back, and I think it was 96 or 94. Wow. At the, down there in the Orange Bowl, the very last play, oh, I don't Ryan, know, yeah. again, it wasn't on TV, and I was in the stands for this one. The very last play, Reinhard Wilson breaks free. He's trying to throw some kind of Hail Mary. Reinhard and just lays him out where he is on the ground basically like having seizures. <laughs> People are running over. Gene's like, that's right, seizures. Yes. People are Jesus. running over him on the field. Nobody's, everybody's ignoring him. For a second, like, I'm like, I'm oh, sorry for that guy. Oh, no, yeah, we won. Hey, who was it we slung into the goalpost? That sorry-ass oh, quarterback. One, or one of those It was guys. one of their sorry-ass quarterbacks getting that was slung a, into was the goalpost. That was at 97? Yeah. 47 nothing. That was beautiful. Yeah, 47 nothing. That That's when our guys were dancing before the kickoff. <laughs> You want to talk about disrespectful. There's like 14 minutes to go in the game, and our guys are like dancing before we kick off, and Miami players are just sitting there waiting to kick. I love the quote. What a mini that like day. They gave up. They gave up. Yeah. They just completely gave it up. It was that beautiful. Was good yeah. times. Good time. Hopefully we'll have a similar scenario this weekend. We I could talk about any number of the last uh, few ass kickings we've laid on them, too. I mean, there's been just been an fun. abbundance it, it of success to before the state of late. And that leads us into the next segment, Jeffrey. The bar. We're calling it the low-hanging fruit segment because mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Miami fans and how much fun All that's going to be. All ten of them. Yes, next on the War Champ Man Cave Show. Beautiful. Taking into a Euclidean theory of whole numbers, one can see a rationalization between the numbers themselves and the entity upon which the transvectoring factors occur. That is not to say that the transgentle factoring is a factor of one, but rather a sublimation of the factor of one. Needless to say, this will be on the exam. Thanks, dude. See you tomorrow. Jimmy John's. Order online at jimmyjohns.com. Taking into account. Welcome back to the War Champ Man Cave Show. We are sponsored by Jimmy John's. Freaky good, freaky fast, freaky fresh. We are also sponsored by Corner Pocket. This segment supported by them. And what a great weekend to go to Corner Pocket. Check out that Vegas wall. Sit there all day. Watch some great college football. And Jeff, if you're not going down to South Florida. Which I am. Which I know I am too. But what a great place well, to watch. so regrettably. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm looking I am forward to that. There's a lot of good South Florida Seminoles down there. So I do enjoy going yeah. down. But if you're going to watch it in town. It's owned by Seminole fans. They're great. It's, it's a great environment to watch a game at, so go check them out. Absolutely. Now, I call this the low-hanging fruit segment, Jeff, because we're talking about one of our favorite subjects, and that is the Miami fan. And I'm gonna do, we're going to yeah. do a scale here. We're going to try to be objective here. Of course, we, I'm sure we can be, right? It's, yeah. And judge them on a 0 to 10 scale in four categories. You know, I, I, want, to, I want to see how you, how you so go. So you have already devised the yes, categories. Yes, I'm okay. going to do it. And then we're going to rate like them on a scale. Is criminality one of the categories for my no, Well, we have Elite one that gets, gets into fighting, scale. but we'll get into that. So that, that could play into it. But sure. let's first of all talk about, you know, great fans fill up their stadium day in and day out. Look at Nebraska fans. They're always supporting their always fans. There, so that's like a sure. 9 or a 10. Yeah. And you have to take into account. Like I don't, I don't want to put in like schools that are bad schools, but you got to you tell how big the school is, its tradition, and factor that in with their sure. attendance. So yeah. Miami attendance, fan very, attendance very, of games, very fickle down in Miami. Fickle, they uh, fickle. Uh, that, that that. So what is the rating system? Zero to ten. Zero to ten. I'm going to give them a two. Really, that high? I'm going to give them a two. And I wrestled with this, Gene, but wow. I'm going to give them a two in that they do show up. That is credit. Every other year. They every other year for one for game. For one game, for our game, sure. But I, so that's bandwagon. I, I'm sorry, I give them yeah, a one. But, but they do show up for a game. A zero would be, you know, I mean. What do you but, think? I mean, considering they're Miami and all this tradition and the national champions and all Americans, the fact that yeah. usually it's oh, about a, a quarter full for we're, most we're, of their games. We're, we're not debating the, the level of embarrassment. But I'm saying, Miami but what, what, what team that is a big-time program yeah. has as bad of attendance as them? Traditionally, I don't think anybody. I don't Nobody. Think That's what I'm saying. They've got to be on a one on that. That's why I think okay. two is giving them too much credit. I didn't know we could actually give somebody. I mean, you have to do it on a bell curve here. We're on a but bell when curve. they're winning, they. But when well, that doesn't three. happen, and <laughs> yeah, they don't consistently win these days. But when they are, you know. So I went so one or two. Oh, I'm gonna go with a one. So Apparently one or two. A two was exceedingly high for my age. I think it is. I think it is. All right. Okay, we're gonna talk yeah. about now. The, next up, uh, next the, the classiness is a little bit. I mean, no, no, all fans have their. Let's see, they all have their bad eggs. Everybody Even Florida does. State oh, does. Sure, I've seen but it, what yeah. I'm talking about, let's say when you roll into like a place like Clemson, a very good day of program. But I mean, you go there, good people. Fans. Yeah, they they're into football. They'll talk football with you. I've gone to tailgates. They offer me food. They offer me drinks. LSU what fans, kind, great what fans. is Oklahoma your fans? Great fans. How do, how do they behave? Fans. Those fans behave Luckily, when you roll into Miami. How are they treating you? Well, these days it's a ghost town, and I just find all my fellow alumni, and we celebrate in the parking lot, and we turn it into Doke South. 
So it's the look, put it this way. Look at this. When it's, it's how you dress, it's how you act, and it's how you carry yourself mm. at, during before God, and after the, during and after the games. Standards are so zero to ten, very, Jeff. Very high. Uh, <laughs> you, you've made it difficult for Miami to succeed in any way <laughs> if you're going to look at dress, behavior, dedication. Yeah. Jesus, Gene. How can they possibly succeed? Well, um, on your scale, you're probably giving them a five, no, right? No, they get a zero. Oh, okay, now just football. being hard, okay. They're the worst fans in college football, and it's really <laughs> not close. I mean, it's really not close. I give them a one. I just think I'm going straight ones. What are you doing? I'm going to give them a one. How do they get a one? I've met, the worst I've met one or two. Football. Out of the thousands of people I've gone, there's been one oh, or no, two no, that no, haven't, no, been, no, haven't no. attacked me. Don't get me wrong. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Let me clarify this real quick. The fan base for Miami... See, now problem, you're arguing against a one. Okay, here's why. <laughs> the fan base for Miami is made up of non-Miami graduates. So this is their overriding problem. Of the Miami fans that went to the university, well, they're exceptional. They, they have to drive a whole doctors, hour to the game. They don't want to go They're likely there. doctors or lawyers or vets or successful people who contribute to society. Those Miami fans that you meet are wonderful people to so talk to. That's why I gave them the one for Right. But there's like 17 of them. So I'm just, <laughs> you can't, it's hard to get into Miami because it's a good school. It's a private school. It's very expensive. The fans that go to the games aren't those fans. All right, now, category three. So you got a zero, I got a one. The next category yeah. is how they That's treat, really well. how they treat the, like we said about the Clemson, how do you treat the opposing fans? Do they get fights with fans? Are they somewhat courteous to fans? How do you think about that? Has a Miami game gone by where you've not seen brawl after brawl break out? No, never. <laughs> but I, but I, I would also say that I think NC State fans belong. They, to they're great. I agree. NC State they're fans fighting Miami suck. for that category. Yeah, they are really trying their best. Look at Caitlin here topping me off. This That's is this is the kind this. of service you get at Corner Pocket right here. That was this is oddly fantastic. sexual. But I, I, I will tell you that. I will say. <laughs> Like, good Lord, Gene. But, 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 Topping I, you off but, with a beer. That, yeah, that's there good you stuff go. Going. For a beer. Right. But, uh, with a beer. But, uh, but here, here's the thing. I, NC State's trying to support They are. I agree. in many ways, that piss-soaked stadium at NC State <laughs> is, is what surpassed. Because the, Miami is no longer in the Orange Bowl. And that smell of urine. True. That is true. That is true. Between the urine and the no blocky, no blocky, you had really a unique situation it's, that is no longer in existence in Miami. Sun Life Stadium is dope. It's out. because it's not their stadium, so they can't. If they, if it was theirs, and I'll tell you the story from the old Orange Bowl. Yeah. Well, the last time I was in there, mm -hmm. the last game when they had the media work area, is that we, when you we got had stabbed? To, no, I wasn't stabbed. I did have a guy pull up the broken glass, try to put it up oh, to my neck the first time I went there as a that fan. That's fantastic. But no, we had when I was in the media work area, we had urine dripping down on the computers. Oh, geez, Jesus. <laughs> that is the old oh, Orange Bowl. So it's funny man. you brought up urine. These fans and urine have a lot in common there. They do, and you know now the new Marlins <laughs> Park is there, the new baseball stadium yeah. is there, and they've they've beautified the area by kicking out all the homeless. <laughs> and in a sea of poor homeless, but and you could talk about the merits of that, whether they should have done that or not. But there's still that gas station right there, which I actually miss. I miss going to that gas station right on the corner that used to be a corner oh, okay. yeah, yeah, with yeah. the bars on the window. Oh yeah. And there was Why would you drive hands. up? You always saw that. Well, yeah. the beauty of that was you pulled up and you took your life into your own hands, and you <laughs> said, you know what, this is part of the experience. I'm going to go ahead and do this because I need beer. And I'm going to get this beer. I could die. And you'd shake your friend's hand. So you, got, you gave him what in this category? Yeah, this category you know, what? Uh, I don't, what, what was the question? This was just dealing with the other fans. How do yeah. they handle other fans coming yeah, they're, in? Did they piss pretty, on them and fight pretty, with them? And they're pretty well at zero, but NC State's <laughs> trying. Okay. NC State's La trying. Last category is how do they handle it when their team is down? How do they treat the team? Well, how do they treat their team. coaches? <laughs> Are they loyal? <laughs> Loyalty. Dedicated beyond reason. It's really... <laughs> It's I mean, they're so vested that they fly banners over the stadium talking about firing the coaches when but that, things get bad. But that would run counter to the disinterest that we're describing amongst their So, I don't know. So, so maybe, maybe they get some right credit from that. that. Maybe they do. And they actually <laughs> should be flying banners that say fire Al Golden. They should be flying, flying banners that say please, please We don't like that, though. No, no. Please retain. Right. Well, we I should be flying we were, banners. I thought we were in trouble when Randy Shannon finally got himself fired when there were 17 people in the stands and they were losing to USF. But... You know, Al Golden has done a successful job of re retaining their level of average. <laughs> and, I, and I'm proud of Al Golden. You do a good job. They, Miami fans, settle down. Al Golden needs to stay there for the next 10 years. He's doing a wonderful job. You guys can piece together eight and four campaigns, seven and five, get yourself bowl eligible. That's good for Miami. So he finished with what, about a one? Yeah. yeah about, about a one, a, okay. About a one, about a one, yeah. That's pretty good for yeah, them. All yeah, right, so Miami, congratulations. You got a one on a zero to ten scale. You're, you're in you, essence, the worst fans. Nowhere to go but up. Football. Yeah. Good for yeah, you. that's true. All right, last segment here we want to talk about is the most despised 
Miami players in the history of the program. There's a long list, Jeffrey. Jeez. And I'm going to give you some of the highlights here because we've got to get through this segment with some guys. Many Let me go through a few. Sure Let's go prison. old school first. Michael Irvin, you know, king yeah. of the push off, White House, cocaine. You know all what he does. I don't blame him for the push off. Um, you know, you should do whatever you can to get open. That's fine. I'll live with that. Um, God, I. It's, it's got to be Kellen Winslow. Well, let me know. Let me do a couple more here. Well, I'm getting yeah, him. I, mean, I think a new, you know, he's made the entry and he's been putting up very strong lately, and that's Anthony Ciccolo. He cries at games, and he really made a statement last game when he gouged tried out, gouge, tried yeah. to gouge out the, the is, eyes. I mean, that, not, that puts him in the category. It does, but he's not an important enough player. He's never been an impact. He's got another game to go. But he might he might do some more outrageous things in this game might, to maybe put him in that category. I think the way you sneak into the category is that you're both an a-hole and good. Oh. So you'd be like really Ray Lewis, you've got to murder people and be really good. Or at least be present in the... Uh, now, the now he's not Hernandez. He's, he's been shadowed over by the guy in Gainesville. Now he's a serial yeah. killer. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Or Chris Rainey, time to die, bitch. Yeah, he was good. There's Jeremy Shockey, but I... I, I think... Yeah. I, I'm going to... Uh, Kellen Winslow Jr. I think so, the soldier. Yeah, the soldier. It's kind of hard because it's just, he's so hated. Yeah. It, it's just so easy. I, I would say, here's the thing about Chicolo. You're giving him too much credit. If he mattered, he could count... But he's never done anything. He's never accomplished anything. But this so, guy, he's just the first one in the last 20 years that you can even point to because they've been so bad. They've been irrelevant, yeah. No, it's Sorry, right. Kellen Winslow, I agree. Yeah, it's unanimous. Yeah, Kellen yeah. Winslow, the Junior, most despised. Yeah. You know, maybe if somebody goes, maybe if Chicolo goes and murders some people, we might put him up on that list. He might get up there. I, I, he'll, I, well, I don't want to say that. I, I'm, I'm gonna leave that <laughs> you want to, but I, I, I want to, but I'm going to hear from every loser Miami fan <laughs> under the sun after this anyhow, which I always do anyhow, so that's all right. All right, we come back in the War Champ Man Cave show. We're going to try one of the worst games we're at. We're not good at this. We're going to try a little flip cup. We haven't done it in a while. Can we let the kids play, Yeah, man? Caitlin, Caitlin wants to play. Look, Caitlin's getting all excited behind us to do this. She's and good I, at this. And I know that sounded, I mean, it sounds like I'm chiding the kids. It's just, it's beyond our era. Let the kids show it. Oh, you know what? You can sit it out. I'm going to chat. I'll read the paper. You read the paper. Read Kirk, 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 read the paper. Kirk Carruthers is coming in. Caitlin's going to represent the youth here. We'll get. We'll do this. All right, next on the War Champ Man Cave show, we're going to do that. What's not to love about the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill? The Corner Pocket is Tallahassee's home for the best of the sports world. NFL, NCAA, MLB, and NBA. The games are always on. The food is always fresh. And the drinks are always cold. And now games are even bigger and brighter with the Corner Pocket's new state-of-the-art Vegas wall. Featuring eight brilliant. 55-inch HD TVs showing the biggest games. Whatever the season, check out the Corner Pockets Micro Bar, serving up the freshest craft brews for you and your friends. Be sure to drop in for Beer Bingo Tuesdays, weekly dart tournaments, daily poker tournaments, and Saturday sit-and-goes. From golden tea to garnet and gold, the Corner Pocket has everything inside its bar and outside on the full-service deck. Before the game, call and ask about tailgate and party specials. The Corner Pocket will serve up your favorite foods hassle-free. Call 850 Zero five seven four twenty seven twenty four. That's five seven four twenty seven twenty four. The corner pocket has it all. Drop by for happy hour today. You'll see why Tallahassee loves the corner pocket. All right, welcome back to the War Champ Man Cave Show. These kids are about to flip some cups, I do believe. Isn't there some sort of uh, starting tradition? There's right. a ritual. We're going right off the bat. We're doing it. Go right let's right see if I can bat. get it all right. Well, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, let's just do it right off the bat. Tap and drink, baby. He did that like he was slow. I'm really concerned oh, there. And then God. spilled on himself. Let's see. Oh! Well. Who's going to get the first flippity do? No, oh, no! You lost. You lost. No, I didn't lose. It's got to go to Caitlin oh, now. Okay, well, yeah, now you have. Oh! First try. Look at this Every guy. time I get my ass kicked, Carruthers is like, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, All right, now you're going to go. Guys. Jeff, you go. You're going to switch. All right, Let's so switch. Quick, you guys so quick, go first. Quick on thing this. here, guys. Uh, do you want Muschamp to keep winning games before they play us so he keeps his job? You know, I'm, I'm kind of torn. It would be awesome if he did. And it's hard to root for Florida to win games, though. But they could win the East. There is a very likely scenario where they could they they're going to win out because Missouri's got to play three SEC teams. Right. They got up including A and M. It sucks. So you want Florida to win the East? I do. What do that puts Florida in a horrible <laughs> position. Yeah, yeah. And what if some fluke by nature they actually win the SEC? That'd be a beautiful. What's thing. And then he'd have to keep them. What's their recruiting ranking right now? It was in the 60s last I saw. Isn't that beautiful? That's why you got to keep much. Got to keep much. But if they keep winning, doesn't it come up? Well, we just, no, 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 not, not that much. Not we that are much. running an offense from 1927. No, it's a rugby no, offense. All right, here we go. Games, you guys get ready? All right, let's yeah. do Let's Set. do game. Kirk, Kirk, here we go. Make it happen. Yeah. Boom, there you go. Drink. Now you drink. Well, here we go. This is going to get on. Oh, Come Kirk. on. Oh, oh you got to be able to pass it up. Ah! Oh, oh, no, we're going to get our butt kicked again. We're going to the second guy. This is hurtful. 
Oh, man. Brother. Come on, Kurt. Man. This guy was an <laughs> all-world athlete. <laughs> I, I worked out today. Can't hey! Go ahead, go, go. Come on, Gene. All right, Nebraska uh, at I Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin Damn. minus six. Nebraska at Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin cool. minus Wisconsin six. Wisconsin all the way. Man. All right, Wisconsin. That ass. Clemson minus three and a half against Georgia Tech. Georgia. No, no, no. Deshaun Watson's yeah. back. Go to oh, Clemson. Me too. Auburn at Georgia. Georgia minus two. Job, Auburn beats that ass bad. Yeah. Mm, curious. I understand. I Look at that offense. Well, they, 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 they don't have crazy turnovers. They're undefeated. Mississippi right now. State at Alabama. Alabama minus eight. Too many points. Yep. Go you gonna take Mississippi State? State? Yeah. All right. I, I got think, Alabama I think, by I seven. Mississippi. I think Alabama wins, but that's too many points. South Carolina at Florida. Florida minus seven. I can't bet on Florida. Not my the old ball Not coach. Seven, the old ball coach. Old ball coach All right, Florida State at the U minus a point and a half. All I can do is this for you guys. There you go. Right there. There is that. All right, Florida nope, State nope. continues to win number 26 in a row. Sure you don't want to bet maybe? against Florida State. You love betting against Florida State. It. I learned my lesson. I will never right, bet right. against the family thanks again. Thanks to Corner Pocket. Thanks to Jimmy Johns. Thanks to the staff here. Thanks to you. And the unmentionables. See you next time, everybody. Take care. Go Nose. Go Nose.